Hey, welcome. Hey, Dana and Phil. Good to see you guys. Um, I have a fun painting. I'm excited to paint tonight. We're going to do a uh, another sunset. This one's a little different color scheme. It's a beautiful scene not too far from my house here. Um, and uh, yeah, the colors, you know, it's one of those things that the colors could actually... It's easy with sunsets to overpaint the color and you get them a little bit garish. I've done it. And uh, so I'm going to try to avoid that today and show you how how I approach it. And uh, we'll go through the fundamentals like we do. You know, the thing that you're picking up watching these videos probably is, um, you know, there's fundamentals that apply to painting just about anything. And then there's special scenes I'll pick like sunsets and snow that require a little bit different effort. Um, or some specialized knowledge, and so I try to share that with you as well. But, um, you know, the basics apply to really pretty much anything. If you can get that, you understand how light falls on form and how you can, um, you know, capture that kind of thing, then you can apply it to any subject matter, even still life. Heck, maybe I'll do a still life one of these times. Uh, Kat, hey, thanks for joining. Excited to be here in Rocky. and great. Good crowd tonight. Um, I'm painting an 8x10. Yeah, you can't see it in my field of view here. 8 by 10 it's going to be on that uh, kind of eggshell gesso board from Jack Richeson that I've been painting on. This one is pre-toned. I did a little drawing. I'll show you that in a minute. Um, so before I switch scenes real quick, let me tell you about my workshop. So I've been telling you about the workshop coming up. Well, I've got all the dates and uh, the venue lined up, the fine people in Winter Park, Colorado. I've got um, the Fraser Valley Arts uh, Council Fraser Valley Arts, I'm not sure their full name, probably getting that wrong. Um, they've invited me up to do a workshop. It's going to be June 9th, 10th, and 11th. And if you haven't been to Winter Park, it's amazing, beautiful place. And um, it'll be just fabulous up there, gorgeous that time of year. So I have a link below to directly to the workshop on my website. I haven't done any promoting on it yet, so you guys are the first to see it. If you would want to come out and join me, it's three days. And it's 400 bucks. There's lots of lodging and dining options there. We'll have a great time. It's more of an intermediate class. So if you paint already, um, then you're good to go. If you're brand new to painting, don't know how to mix paint, not sure about your palette, this would be a struggle for you. But if you're painting, especially if you've already had a boot camp or a class from me, you're good to go. This is one I'll take you to the next level with composition, color, and uh, really on you know, how to be successful in the field with all those changing conditions. So come join me in June. Check that out. All right. Um, ask questions as we go here. I'm going to switch my view over to my scene and palette here. Oh. My medium tonight. I've got a couple. I'm using the uh, Galka gel again. This is the one I've been using. Um, sits up as a gel, adds body to the paint, speeds up drying and flow. And then I've got um, Neil McGilp. Neil McGilp is this stuff here. It's from Gamblin. I love Gamblin. Good stuff, and they've been good to me. Um, this is a gel also. When you shake it, it gets liquid, and then it'll set back up into a gel. So that's in the cup. It's a little saucier, which will help me move the paint around. I've got more canvas to cover tonight. So I wanted to do that. Did a little drawing just to lay things out. You know, when you draw something, it's always good. I don't always do it, but um, maybe this is the first time is I put an X right in the middle. I also mark the middle points here. You can do other lines and, you know, kind of work on, um, use, use lines and, and dividing the canvas here to um, do more advanced compositional things, which I won't uh, talk about tonight, but, you know, there's a lot of different things you can do compositionally. I like to make sure I know where the middle of the canvas is, so I avoid having my center of interest there. These mountains here will fall on that line, and that's okay. Um, you know, I just want to be aware of, of that. My horizon line's about right here. And uh, basically, most of that foreground is in shadow. And, um, well, almost the entire scene's in shadow other than the sky because the sun has set. So, again, uh, I want to point out and encourage you guys to, if you're using a palette, use a palette that's not white. You can use a middle tone gray like this, or even a wood palette. Um, that helps you judge your colors right here on the canvas. And that's really important. So, um, 
and like I've, I've said in the past weeks, when I'm mixing here, if I mix a darker color than this gray, I know it's probably on the shadow side of the spectrum. If I'm my mixture's lighter than this gray, it's probably on the light side. So, you know, use your palette. It's, it's easier to trust the palettes and the, the, your palette and the mixtures on it when they're side by side down here than um, to trust your little pieces of paint that you put up on the canvas um, before the entire canvas is covered. Okay. Let's see here. I'm going to take a, a decent size brush here and get some of my get some of my tones for the shadow areas going. I'm just going to find this. I don't really want it to be purple. Uh, there's a little green. I mean, these are trees are green, you know, but it's at the end of the day. You can't really see too much color in them. I also don't want them to be really too dark either. Um, but I do need a nice dark tree, you know, so that the the sunset kind of kicks up and, and punches out. You know, you can tell that it's a sunset, and part of that brightness is going to come not from the really bright paint, but from the fact that it's surrounded by other dark objects. Um, yeah, there's some... The sky is kind of cool in there as well. So this is really dark, you know, compared to my... If that's the middle value, my panel is my middle value. I'm going to bring a little more white in there. I'm going to try to not have the dark so dark and heavy tonight. See what we can do there. Now I'll have some dark accents, but I think I can get away with uh, not making this too dark. And that's part of the fun, you know, you got to test these kind of things. So set yourself little challenges. Don't think of every painting as being, it's got to be perfect. It's got to come out. Um, you know, think about, well, what could I try different? What could I learn from this? How far could I push the light being light? So I've got a, a little darker value than my middle, which is good. But it's nondescript. It's not really reading as any color. It's really kind of a gray. So I am going to bring it up. Bring a little bit of the, the green into there, maybe. All right. So that's a start. And I'm just going to map in some of these trees here. Now, I know some of this is going to cause me some angst when I, when I try to um, bring the, the sky up into this shape, right? That sky colors kind of, uh, you know, it'll be really clean tints. And, uh, of course, um, I'm going to pick up some of this green in there, and that'll taint it. So I don't want to do too much of that. Now, this is my foremost shrub. And last week's, was it last week I did Linear Perspective? I think so. Hey, that painting, painting came out really good. I got to put a picture of that up. I, I think for a 5x7, that was um, even surprised me how uh, fun it is to look at. Sometimes I, I, you know, I avoid those smaller paintings because I think, um, you know, there's just not much real estate. I want to say more on a bigger panel, but um, yeah, then every now and then I do one of those and it surprises me. Anyway, what was my point? Linear perspective last week. This is my largest shrub um, or set bank of trees, really, and it's in the foreground. So it's a little bit larger than this other grouping back here. And it's also a little warmer in temperature. So I'm going over to the right here and I'm adding a little more blue and lightening this up a little bit. Not a whole lot. I'm actually going to go a little bit into the, the uh, alizarin permanent as well. And I'm going to map in this bank. Map in. I don't know why I'm saying map in, but, you know, just kind of um, rough in the shape of these trees here. Now, funny thing, the less precious you get about this, sometimes in the end, the more realistic they look. Okay, and so off in the distance, they're going to get a little bit cooler. And um, way off there in this, this other bank, then I'm getting into really a violet. And that's partially because of the, uh, the mountains and just the colors of the, uh, of the sunset and all of that. 
right? I still need this to be pretty dark, so I'm squinting down. It's about the same value as my, when I squint and I look at this pile versus my palette. It's about the same value, just a little bit darker. I think I can get away with that though. We'll try it here. What I really need this to do is to be clearly a different shape and field of information than the, the tree next to it. You're going to believe that it's, you better believe it. You're going to believe that this is trees back here. Um, just because, you know, there's enough information to, to tell your eyes that it is. But it's going to be, there's really no detail in there at all. And then um, what I'm hoping for is that, you know, like right here, the value and color of the trees here versus that tree in the foreground, very different. This is darker and a lot richer with greens and, and what does green have in it? Yellow, right? So that comes forward. All right. Hey, we got a good crowd on tonight. 16 people. Thanks for joining. Um, tell me where you're from if you haven't been on before. Okay. So again, I'm just kind of getting the, I'm blocking in some of the main shapes in here. I've got my darkest darks other than my highlight or my uh, dark accent, I should say. I've used this same brush the whole time. One of those Princeton Aspens. I'm really liking these. Yeah, some of the synthetics are too flexible and floppy. And uh, this is, seems to be just right. And they um, are holding up really well. So I'm going to put that one aside. Keep that as my tree color. And I see I just made a progression there. I started in the foreground. And I lightened and cooled as I went back. Don't always use that as the rule. But that works in this case. So I'm doing it. All right. Then this foreground. Let's get some of that in there. Um, you know, it's a it's a really cool. You know, they're grasses basically. So I'm gonna grab ochre. I'm gonna start there, and I'm gonna bring some violet into it, and I'm gonna lighten that up quite a bit. Man, I just do dove into that paint, didn't I? Maybe you should get good at your color mixing before you do that, but I know where I'm going with this and I want a decent pile of paint. So, um, yeah, I'm not too worried about that, but I know pigments are expensive. So if you want to take a more cautious approach <laughs> than I do, that's understandable. Okay, so um, if I look at my image there, this is going to be a little bit lighter. Those grasses are lighter than the trees because they're a flat plane looking up into the sky and they are probably darker than they're definitely darker than the sky maybe about the same value as those mountains there i'll put in in a minute so let's see where i'm at if i put this right next to the darkest of my tree that's the kind of value spread i have seems like it's enough if i compare it to here on my palette um, and I squint my eyes, that takes a lot of the color out, then I really can't discern too well the difference between the palette. So it means that this value is about a middle value on my light to dark, black to white scale, right? So I've got the right value, I think. And do I have the right temperature? Um, I think it's good enough to start. So let's, you know, I've chosen a round brush here and I kind of enjoy you know, using the side of these and squishing out paint. Getting all of this kind of neat stuff happening by moving that some paint around. What, what I want here is I want, um, what do I want? I want this, um, a little bit of grass here is going to go behind the tree a little bit. And that's off in the distance. Oops, I got a little heavy-handed there. That's all right, I can scrape that off. I really want this to be a clean area because I'm going to lay that uh, little bit of um, re reflection on the water. So. I'm going to take the time to clean that off real quick. Okay, good enough. Um, so, I want 
that grass back there to be a little bit cooler. And I can actually even lighten that a little bit. Just within this puddle here, a little bluer, a little whiter. I'm going to put that off into the distance here. And I don't need to get too, too precious with that. But that coolness and that little bit of lighter is going to help push that back. All right, so I'm dipping in, going to get a little more of this blue and alizarin. And, you know, look at how I'm just using the brush here to... I mean, it looks quick and sloppy maybe, but it's very, you know, I've done this a lot. So I know what I'm going for here. Um, and I don't want a real repetitive brush stroke, basically. So every f little bit, then I, I will uh, mess with that mixture. Modifying the, the color temperature of it. And I'm modifying the value of it, but ever so slightly. And these foregrounds, I find the key is going to be building up texture, you know. Don't be afraid to have some paint on there. It makes it interesting in the foreground. And, um, you know, it just gives you a lot of visual interest. So see, I'm just layering that in. Now I've got a different color in here. Moving my brush around, squishing paint off, you know, just have fun with it. And this will just be the first, the first pass here. Now, it's getting a little darker in the foreground for sure. So I should probably show a little of that. Um, and what this can do is it kind of mimics when you're looking at grasses, you know, you look over a bank of field of grasses. Well, back here, you're looking at, you know, the tops of them. But when you're looking down like 10 feet in front of you, you can see down into the grasses, right? And they're not getting, you know, there's some areas that aren't getting light and they're a little darker and all of that kind of stuff. So that's where putting in some of these darks in the foreground can make you just, it can really add like a third dimension to that grass. I'm going to pop in a little warm up here too. What the heck, that'll be a nice thing to find when you're viewing the painting is, oh, look, it's all kind of nighttime and everything, but there's a little pop of warm in there too. It seems a little frantic and hurried, doesn't it? But you get these, um, you know, it's like... Um, yeah, conducting an orchestra or something, right? You know, get your arm into it, have fun, um, and don't don't be too precious about it. And I'm thinking about composition here too. So obviously I've got the lines, I've got a curving line here and a big shape in the foreground, comes up into these trees, and it's gonna kind of sweep back along that lake shore in the distance. All of that's planned out where those are, the size of the shapes, the dip, the angles, all of that. And then again in this foreground, as I'm putting some of these details in, um, I, you know, I'm putting in some lines that are maybe compositional a bit. I can put in a dark accent where I want it, for example. Um, yeah, I've got, I can do anything I want orchestrating that foreground. All right, so. 70%, I'm gonna move on. That's really a pretty nice feeling foreground. I'm gonna probably lay some light on top of that as I go, but not right now. Okay, what else do we have? So now I start to step back and I get into areas here. Let's see, I got a bank of mountains. Okay, so Phil's asking, at what point does a painting become a nocturne? You know, I think any time the sun has set and you start to get to where artificial lighting might come into play, um, or, or basically the, the landscape isn't directly lit by the sun anymore, it kind of qualifies as a nocturne. That's just my opinion. All right, now I'm going to go into these mountains, and what I liked about this scene 
what I like a lot about this scene, but um, one of the key things is how clean that, the you know, the colors in the mountains, it turns to that violet and the sky, really pretty. So I've been dipping into my white with my brush, which sometimes is a no-no if you're disciplined enough to mix your colors with a palette knife, go that route. Um, I get to painting fast, so I'll try to pull out of my white with, you know, the dark colors on one side, but then if I need the clean white, I'll go up here to the top. Bring some medium into that. Now, this is going to be um, a key, a key color to mix here. It's still pretty dark. It's not going to be as chromatic as I could make it. I'm going to have to numb that back a little bit. I think. Maybe not. I see some orange in there. Especially at the top, I see a kind of a, a fade of color. Um, at the top, it's got the orange kind of bleeding in from the sky. That's real beautiful. And then toward the bottom, it's going more toward blue, violet, something like that. Okay, so is that right? Well, I look at those distance, distant trees, and what's the relationship? Well, I've got the distant tree puddle right here, so I put that right next to it. And it looks like there's too much value contrast between those two. I need to go a little darker. So I'm going to find the value here. Um... That's close, a little too dark, maybe. Now I'm dipping into two reds here. I'm dipping into the alizarin because I want a nice purple, but then I'm also dipping in the cad red light because I do want it to be a little on the grayer side. Cat's asking why I didn't do a stain or an underpainting to start. Well, um... I sure could have, Cat. I don't usually, when I start with these pre-toned panels, now I could have put like an ochre or a warm um, base on there for sure, but, um, whoop, what I do? But I decided that, um, you know, that this was already pre-toned, and I just didn't feel I needed it tonight. Sometimes I want to put that underpainting in so it'll glow a little bit, like a nice warm tone. And uh, that could have definitely worked with this, but I would have had to chose chosen a, a white or an unprimed panel to start to pull that off. So I think the, the main answer for me tonight was that I didn't, I had a pre-toned panel and it's just a neutral, and so I went with that. And if I were to tone it here, I would have gone with, you know, kind of a warm, yeah, a golden um, ochreish orange type of a undertone. Okay, testing this right along my that background of trees. Um, I think there's enough value contrast. Those mountains are really similar in value to the um, the grasses in the front, right? And the way I have them right now, they're a little bit lighter, and that's okay because I'm going to lighten up those grasses a bit yet. Oh, wow, I just got a whole bunch of ultramarine blue there. It's all right. Okay, so what I'm going to do, that's kind of the base color of the mountains there. And then I'm going to lighten it as I go up and pull in some of that orange. So let's get that going here. Um, so I have that on there and I'm squinting down. And I think I'm going to go just a hair lighter. Almost imperceptible from what I have down there, but... Um, so I'm going to, as I'm doing this, carve out some of these shrubs in the background. It's kind of hard to do the negative carving and, and when you have kind of rounded 
tree shapes in the background, so I'll have to come back in with the tree color back there and do some repainting of that. Now because I'm picking up that brown or that uh, green of the tree as I'm getting up closer to it, I'm wa if I do touch this tree at all with that, <clears throat> I'm going to clean my brush off. Go a little more violet here. I can barely even tell that. And same thing over here. Now I can just kind of outline these trees. It doesn't have to be perfect. And I can get two brush strokes there. If you notice that, I should have said something. All right, let me do it again. So when I'm coming up and I'm getting up to where I might hit the tree and pick up some of that paint that I don't want to sully my mix, I can flip my brush over then and usually get a second stroke in because what I picked up on the brush is going to be on the back side now. Likewise, if I use the, the edge or the side of my brush to draw along there, like that, that edge is dirty now and contaminated, but I, if I turn it to the other one, then I can come back in and do another stroke before I have to wipe the paintbrush off. Okay, so as I'm getting more color on here, I'm squinting and I'm just looking to see if um, the value relationships are good here. And I think, you know, I think, yeah, I think that's going to work. It's a good start. Now, some of the fun doing this is, um, you know, is carving back into some of the trees and, and making some you know, little sky holes and that kind of thing. Make the trees stand out. I won't do too much of that. But this is, the, you know, one of the times you can come back in and start doing that. And, um, okay, my mountain here. We have a mountain here in Fort Collins called Horse Tooth because it looks like a horse's tooth. And I have included it here. So, um... I'm just going to rough that in there, get horse tooth kind of situated in where it should be. And just scrub my color in there. Now I, I lightened and made that a little more orange. I think I'm going to push it just so we can really see it there. Too much. And then this will be, this helps to soften that edge a little bit too with the, uh, the orange of the sky that's going to be here in a minute. And the mountain shape doesn't have to be perfect just yet. I can use the color of the sky to adjust that. Okay, so I don't, you can see a bit of it on the screen there. Yeah, that gradation between a, a more of an orange purple down to the, the deeper purple there. Um, I might just, for sake of it right now, take my brush and I ended on that background color there um, for the trees. And I'm going to maybe put some of that, you know, de delineate some of those tree shapes in there. This is hard to do and not be mechanical with it, honestly. So I'm trying to let the brush maybe impart some texture and brush strokes in there that make it feel a little more shrubby. And then of course I can come back in with that darker color. Whoops. I can come back in with the darker color here and or the lighter mountain color rather, the darker part of it, and um, 
you know, carve out some trees and shapes back there a little bit more if I want. I'll watch my color mixes. I want to keep that nice and clean. That's part of the my whole concept with this is I really like that clean color there. Okay, then using that color, I'm, I'm going to jump right up into the sky because that that cloud in the sky is a cool shape um, as far as meaning interesting, but it's that same color only a little bit lighter. So I'm going to mix that right next to it. Now notice I'm using a pretty big brush here. This is a size 8 on an 8x10. That might horrify some people. Because you think, oh, I can't control that. That's too big of a brush. I'm gonna get into trouble. And you might, but you can do a lot with this brush. Um, and then you can decide if you need to go in in any more detail. Okay, so this one's gonna be a little lighter. Got the same color. I wanted to mix that same color. Now I'm going to bring it down a little bit lighter. And yeah, it goes the whole spectrum. There's a lot of variation in that cloud pattern there. So I'm going to, I'm going to try to design the shape so it's a little more fun too as well. Jay, thanks for joining. You finally caught a live stream. Well, welcome. Glad to have you. All right, so I see a little darker edge up there. I'm going to just pop a few of these in. I see the darker edge maybe over here as well. Kind of a cool or an interesting, neat color and shape there. And then it, it, I see a little bit of just kind of light blue in the middle here. That's that's really not the right value, or not color temperature, rather, I should say. Um, yeah, it seems a little bit too... It's too blue. So the opposite of blue is orange. And that makes sense, because the sky is imparting a lot of its orange color in that cloud, right? So if I don't know what the color is, I describe it. As best I can and in this case I could just say well it's too blue and go from there well I'm trying to find it here but I don't want it to be exactly like those clouds or I'm sorry like the mountains rather but it, they can have a little bit of that in there for sure And then I think as I go down, it gets a little darker maybe. Some of that type of thing. Maybe I'll lighten some of that and go in above there. I want to keep this kind of a flat shape. It's not going to have a lot of rounded edges and stuff because I think that that really looks cool against that sky. I like that look. Okay, I'm going to bring this in here. Now I'm going to start to get into the touching the paint of the tree. And that's all right. So I can be really pretty... Um specific here and try to define the tree edges a little bit as I do that. Wiping my brush in between, trying to, and looking at my photo reference. And this is a this is an area I have, you know, I have to really practice con restraint on to to not noodle around in here too much. 
because if you, you know, some of this actually is, is better if I do the second day after I've had time to kind of, I'll get away from the painting a little bit and then come back in and, and see where sky holes make sense. Um, we'll leave it at that for right now. So still pretty basic shapes. It's reading. You understand what you're looking at, I think, you know, as a viewer of the picture. So let's keep going. All right. So this sky. All right. Here's where, here's where it can all kind of go wrong. And that is the chroma for the sky. So what I'm going to do here, I need a nice clean area to mix. I'm going to pick up this paint, identifiable, identifiable color groups, and I'm just going to move that up there because I'm going to need that violet purple again if I go back in and modify any of the edges on the clouds or the, the mountains there. And um, same thing with my grasses here in the foreground. So since I don't have a huge palette here, I'm giving myself a little more room to mix my clean color sky or sky color and I'll wipe this off you really want to get this clean a little a little dirty paint in there is okay because you know if you just use pure tube paint and white it's gonna be pretty well it's gonna be pretty um, intense and it won't fit in necessarily with the rest of your your painting here you know, if I put, let me just put some orange up here and show you. If I do that, <clears throat> you don't want to do that. You know, I mean, that's just way too intense chromatically. If I add white into my orange here, now notice I'm using my palette knife because it's going to help me keep a cleaner mixture too than if I mix this with a brush. I am still way too chromatic, way too much orange in this mixture. So I'm going to keep adding white, try to knock it back. White is going to cool it off and it's going to neutralize it. It's a gray, a graying effect. And I'm picking up a little of this purple on there too. What the heck? Because that's the opposite. You know, it's a cool color and if I mix it into the orange, it's also going to help neutralize it. So did that scare anybody when I put that orange on there? I'm used to, in a workshop, people would gasp. I don't have any hear any gasps. <laughs> One-way conversation here. I'm using a lot of white. I should have maybe put less orange down, but that's okay. Okay, so it's really light in value. And um, it's going to read as orange. Now, see, I put that right next to that other orange there. And look at the difference. Now, I don't know if it's orange enough, but I can always, you know, I can always make it more orange later. In fact, when this painting's dry, if it's not, if it, if it needs a punch of color, completely dry, I could mix my Galkid gel or, or preferably like uh, Galkid light or even this Neoma Gilp and make a thin, um, you know, wash, a transparent layer that I could put on over top of the, uh, of the, um, you know, the dried painting and boost that color. Gasp, thank you, cat. <laughs> okay, so I don't want those colors. It's as easy as scraping them off here. Now see how that orange stained the canvas? So see, cat, to your earlier question, why didn't I stain the canvas? I sure could have, even though it's pre-toned, I could have put a stain of color on there if I wanted to, and it would have that effect. Um, yeah, just not as much of an effect maybe as if I had taken um, and, and started with a white panel. Okay, um, let's see, I need a little bigger synthetic brush. One second. All right. Yeah, so I'll use a an eight rosemary long flat. This is a synthetic ivory. And <clears throat> 
So the other thing I notice about my sky is that it is going, as I go up, it's doing what? It's going more to that blue. And the blue is really a, you know, it's not a violet blue. It's a, it's more of a greenish blue, a cobalt. I can fudge that because I want color harmony. And I need that to be grayed down. So if I want to gray that down, I can go into, you know, it's going to naturally gray when I blend it in with that orange. I'm going to put a little bit of it in to start because I, I want that to read as blue, but I really want it to be harmonizing with the other sky colors there. So you can add a complement into a color and you can keep adding and adding and adding. And, and basically at some point, your blue is going to, if I'm adding red, your blue is going to turn into a color you would identify as blue upon first looking at it. It might be really reddish blue, but it's clearly in the blue family. And so that's what I'm trying to do. Keep it there. Very grayed, very muted blue, but that's blue and that's orange. Pretty clear when I look at those two. I'm going to lighten this up. So what I'm doing is I'm getting that pile of blue already here. And um, then I can dip into and, and mix that as I as I create this kind of a, um, a sky that's blending down from blue into orange. Now that's pretty light. And I think that's probably going to be okay. It's hard for me to judge this one right now. Get rid of this little bit of red there because I am definitely likely to hit that with the edge of my brush, not know it, and then have it on the panel. Um, so what I can do here, I could have mixed a little more of this color actually, but if that's the blue that I need, and I'm going to be mixing into the orange, I can kind of mix those guys together right here on my palette. And then I've got little bits of, I've got that transition. I'm not totally mixing them because they'll neutralize each other out and turn to a gray or a neutral brown or something like that. So I need a little bit of identifiable color from each group. Um, and then as they mix together, you get a really nice um, kind of this scintillating vibration of of um, color between the warm and the cool. That's a trick. Okay, let's do it. So I'm going to start down here and try to uh, draw my mountains a bit. And and all the mean all the while here, I'm looking to say, well, is this paint going to be chromatic enough? And it looks a little white and chalky, honestly, right now, so I might have to do something different there. But we're all about, you know, pushing through and trying stuff here. You know, I took a workshop from Quang Ho one time, a long time ago, many years now, I guess. And something he said that stuck with me was, you know, you can do anything once and get a neat effect, but that's really kind of an accident. It's not until you learn how to reproduce that effect that you really can employ it where it needs to be. I'm probably paraphrasing a lot of that, but that was the gist of it. So, you know, try different things. And if you find out you had a little oops, but you like the effect, really study it and figure out, okay, why did that, why do I like that? What did I do to get that? And I'm going to need to go into that shrub. So I think what I'm going to do there is just actually leave a little bead of paint. I'm going to put a little more paint right there and I'll come back and mess with that edge. Um, okay, so it does look a little pale to me and that, you know, not as saturated of an orange, but I'm okay with that 
because I don't want it to be. I could keep chasing this all day and um, end up with way too intense of an orange. What I'm interested really in is looking and squinting down and seeing how this glows. And right now that sky really glows, doesn't it? Well, that looks like the source of light in the painting, and that's great. I just don't want it to be too much. And I might obliterate some of these clouds, and I'll come back in. Oh, that's a neat effect there. And let's see, as I go up, bring a little yellow and a little, well, you see, I got quite a bit there. A little of that cad yellow into here as well. Just a little bit, but I want to punch that color up as I go up into the sky, because the sun's down below the mountains now, and so a lot of times that's going to be your lightest area, I find. Now I find that um, this paint, if I'm pushing, if I'm not putting enough paint on the panel here, then it does look a little bit, um, I can see the undertone of the canvas on here. Well, I shouldn't say canvas, it's not actually canvas, it's gesso board. And I'm kind of looking at my reference here, just for ideas. And really just trying to deposit paint on here. And I'll save the tree edge work for a little bit. And if I go back and forth between the two bands of orange, I'm picking some up and redepositing it in the lower band and, you know, basically kind of blending those two colors together here. So I'm going to pause for a second and look at the overall design here and see if I like what's happening, and I do. So I'm going to start to come up here, and I'm just going to try to get some paint on here. I'll smooth all this out, but I need to get this covered and a layer of paint on here so we're not seeing that board underneath. And I, I, I normally I would be maybe a little more careful with this. But it's very likely I might even smooth some of this out with a palette knife. So see, I'm moving my mixture. I'm picking up more and more of that blue each time as I'm going up. And it's hard not to overmix this, so don't worry about that. You're gonna, I didn't overmix it on my palette, but as you're smoothing the brush strokes and putting them down here, the paint, each time you touch the paint with the brush, it's gonna smooth it out a little bit, or mix it, I should say. But at this level, or at this point in the painting, I don't even know if that blue is exactly the way I want it up there, right? So I have to, I have to get something down to, to then judge it. So I've got really brush, brushy brush strokes up there. Um, so what I'm looking at is, is the fade of that sky realistic? Is it something that I like <clears throat> in general? I think so. I'm just going to see what my palette knife does here. This is a really, oh, I like that. Yeah, I like that a lot. So the palette knife here, I'm trying to stay in that one band of orange. 
but I can, you know, with like frosting a cake almost, smooth and pick up this paint and, and redistribute it and just get a really nice um, kind of texture there. I'm pulling it down right now into the mountain a little bit and that might help me create a, a cool edge. I've been using the word cool a lot tonight, I think. Um, an edge that is interesting to look at. Got a little bit of that dark in there. Now I can go back and touch this all up with the, uh, you know, the brush later. I can, I've got my pile of violet here, so I can go back in and, and drag some of that down on top. And uh, I'm just getting different textures here, so it's kind of fun. But in the, you know, in the end, I'm just getting some paint on here. It's no big deal. I can modify those marks with the brush. Um, but right in here, what I like about the palette knife is I'm smoothing the paint out. I'm also, I'm picking up some orange right now, right? And then when I move here, I'm leaving a little bit of that orange in the blue. Same thing here, I'm picking up some blues and I can redeposit some of that down here. So you get some new, like look at that little mark, that's kind of cool. I hope that's in the frame. Um, so anyway, I'll, I'll do a little bit of that. And then I can also smooth it out uh, with my, um, uh, what was that, that badger hairbrush that I've showed you before. I don't have it handy, but I'll, I'll get that in a minute. Okay, let's pop that water in there. So the water's basically going to be that same color. It looks a little bit lighter, actually, in my reference here. We'll see if we can get that going here. Well, maybe I want that to be a little more chromatic. Yeah, I think I can get away with it being a little more on the, the orange-red side there. Um, yeah. So I've got that distant shore. Try to come right up on that. Like that. I am going to modify slightly this mixture every few brush strokes because that's kind of fun. Now I'm having trouble getting that paint to actually lay down and stick. So I'm putting a little of that Neil McGilp in there. And that helped a little bit. I'm using a nice kind of vertical brush stroke here. And what's really fun now about this kind of stuff is you can, um, you know, you can see where little bits of this are poking through in the trees. You know, and all of a sudden then that edge of the tree just comes alive because you see little bits of this paint. And I'm, there's a pretty thick bead of paint on here right now. because I want this to really stand out. Maybe put a little more yellow in there. Kind of polluted it with something. Okay, and then I can clean this whole edge of grass up later. That's really easy. And we got the same kind of thing happening over here in these trees. Um, so that's really a, just a gentle little touch there 
shows you that those trees are in front of the lake and it's still glowing behind there. It adds a really nice little touch, I think. This is pretty delicate work over here. Now I can put a few more in. I don't want to really mess with the, the shape of this tree, so I'm going to show you something. If I put it right there, put a sky hole there, all of a sudden that tree's a little bit different. You know, and, and actually, I kind of like it. So, um, you know, I can, I can do a little bit of that, I guess. And if I didn't like it, I can scrape it right out. But, you know, it kind of opened up the whole painting, that whole side there, I think. So I'm going to leave it. Yeah, I think I'll leave it. I kind of like... Um, Yeah, carving out what those trunks might look like there. Okay, so now I have to look at the whole thing. I've got everything covered and I need to decide, all right, do I have a painting here or do I just scrape it off and suddenly end this and say I had a technical difficulty? No, I wouldn't do that. We'll work through it. Okay, so I look at it. It's pretty posterized as far as just flat shapes, which is what we want to do at this stage. Um, I don't think it's too garish in color, so not too chromatic. I think that's working pretty good. So I th think I can go into refining it. So we did the, we kind of did the block in. We've we've judged. We've got the whole thing covered, judging the values. And I would make any adjustments to values right now if I knew they were wrong. But I see that they're they're okay. Um, I'm, I know that I'm going to lighten this field a little bit. That was the plan from the beginning. The, the highlights here in the grasses as they go back. Uh, I'll add some darks and different colors into the trees here. I might change the color temperature of that bank of trees back here. Seems it's a little bit... Yeah, a little bit unique. Um, not in harmony with some of the others, I think. I'm just kind of a gut feel on that one. And... I'll probably soften some of that sky. So, I'm going to hit the field first. Actually, I'm going to just take my palette knife here in the water and smooth some of this out. It's a little too much brush stroke in there. And that'll just allow me to, I better not touch that. That'll just allow me to, um, yeah, it sits flat there a little bit more. Okay, so let's go back in to these grasses here. And, um, you know, I've got, I've got some light on there and it's, it's kind of this, this blue, more to the blue violet. I'm going to lighten that mixture up. I have quite a bit of paint on there. I might need more white tonight. It's a little on the green side. I don't really want that, so I'm going to bring some alizarin crimson in. There we go. And some of this color, I'm just going to test a little bit of it here. Still a little dark. Need to warm it up just a little bit. Um, so I see some of that, you know, off here for sure. Ah, it doesn't quite feel right. Let me try to find that that color. I need to add some reds into it. It's a little bit uh, kind of a green blue. Okay, here we go. This 
So what I'm doing here is kind of skimming this paint over the top. To, um, you know, to just kind of show that those grasses lay down as they go off into the distance. And I'm going to change that mixture from, um, I'm going to make it a little more on the alizarin side as I go off over here. Now that paint that's underneath it that I put down first has set up pretty well. So it's, um, you know, this new paint that I'm putting on top is kind of dragging along. And now that's off in the distance, but I can leave some little traces of this color in the foreground. That makes it kind of fun too. And I can actually even punch this up and have fun with a little bit of color as we come into the foreground here. I don't want there to be too many highlights. That might even be a little bit bright. But all of these little, um, you know, cools, warms, little bits of confetti almost here that I'm putting in make you believe that, you know, you're seeing a lot of reflected light, you're seeing atmospheric light, um, you're harmonizing the painting as you do this. There's a lot of benefits <clears throat> to going back in and adding this variety. And then more blue on this side. That might be a little light. You know, I, I don't think it's too light. It's kind of bright right now, but it's actually going to... Um, I'll lose some of that as the painting dries, I find. I'll add a little bit of it right there, like there's a little bit of uh, shoreline back there. And then maybe a little bit lighter yet. <clears throat> maybe bring a little ochre into that. And just a few a few little areas of, of even lighter lighter marks in here. Just some calligraphy that makes it fun to look at. Kind of leave it at that right now. And then likewise, I could go and make it a little bit darker and add some, um, you know, some hints of more chromatic violets and purples and stuff in here. And when I do that in the foreground, then, you know, I think what I said earlier, it kind of brings you into the foreground and, and your viewer says, oh, you know, I see some darker shadows here. I'm going to lighten that up and step that back a little bit into the painting further into that field just so it you know these kind of feel integrated that's a little bit too blue there you know sometimes you can just leave those little things you think oh that was way too blue well leave it for a minute and see what happens maybe it's something you'll like later all right, well, I have a lot of color in there. And then I think what I'm going to do is just come back in, mix up that grass color again. And, um, you know, just reiterate some of that grassiness in the original light color. And uh, break up some of those lines I just put in. Harmonizing it all again. What do you guys think? Oh, let's see, Rocky. Sorry, I missed your comment. Oh, yeah, don't forget to paint the, the tooth in. That's right. Yeah, that'll be the, that'll be the thing I spend 20 minutes on, <laughs> making those two little dashes. All right, so, yeah, Rocky, let's go up and uh, let's see. Where was that brush? Grab the wrong one. 
I'm going to go back then into my horse tooth and kind of clean this up, get that mountain defined the way I want it, including the tooth. And I'm doing this kind of painterly. I like some of those palette knife marks that I had in there. I don't want to, I don't need to get rid of all that stuff, right? And then I'm going to, uh, so this is the beauty of having these different brushes now. I can go into my yellow brush, orange brush. And I'm just going back and forth with this shape. So I did the positive painting of it and now... I'm going to try to come in here and with the sky color and, and shape it up a bit. Having trouble getting that painting, that paint to stick there still a little bit. There we go. Okay, and then, um, well, I should save it because I'm going to work on this sky a little bit more, but, you know, I'll just take and... Um, do the smallest of little indents in that uh, in the tooth to show the truth the tooth and that's enough to where people here would say oh yeah that's horse tooth I get it okay um, so the other thing I want to do here a little bit is, um, you know, is go ahead and, and define some of the, put some of these tree holes, sky holes in the tree, I should say. And I left myself a little bead of paint right here. I do that sometimes if I think I'm going to run out of the mixture later on my palette and I want to be sure I got that color, I'll leave just a little pool of it on the panel where I need it. And then later as I'm going back in, um, you know, to work on that spot, I know what I have and why. Now, I feel like I've got too many sky holes in here. That's getting too busy, and that's okay. I can, you know, mess with those here and get rid of them <clears throat> when I go back in and paint the tree. So, let's, um, I'm going to grab my soft brush, and I want to smooth out that sky a little bit. Part of what I really liked about this whole scene is that, um, these shapes of the clouds and the sky are really very flat. So I'm trying to just hit the cloud right now. That's only going to last so long here and then I get into hitting the, the orange. Okay, so I, I did the blue. I've got blue on my brush. Now I need, I wiped it off and I'm going to come back in and try to just very lightly smooth out this sky. Now see how I went over the blue and it didn't pick it up? I, I, suppose, ex <laughs> I suspect that's just because really it had a little bit of a chance to sit on the panel and the paint set up. And I can drag this down in and I can even smooth out this mountain a bit here. And what happens when I'm doing this, um, what tends to happen then is when you smooth that out, it sets it, you know, it takes some of that textural image, or uh, interest rather, uh, away. And it softens that, it softens edges, and it sets all of that kind of stuff further in the background. Okay, so I need to clean the tip of that brush good. I don't want to get it in mineral spirits, so I'm just wiping it on a dry terry cloth towel here I have in my lap. If I dip this in mineral spirits and it's wet and I put it up here to do it, it'll just pick up all this paint, so never do that. And now I'm able to do this really lightly and you can see that it's keeping still the, that really random mixture mixing type of thing that the palette knife gave me that I liked. It's not completely getting rid of that but it is taking the edge off. So I get the best of both worlds. 
And I might not like this when I'm done, so I might go back in and do, you know, more. I don't know. But I'll start here because I, I tend to think that the skies, you know, in the last year I've been doing this more and more in my skies. I feel that they just, um, uh, it just, you get some really nice soft mixes in clouds and stuff that I think are very natural and a little bit random. And I like that. And I can even go over this little shape here and really I'm blurring that edge and softening that edge on that last little cloud out there. In fact, I don't like that. So I'll need to come in with some more orange paint, no big deal. And in some areas I can really soften that line. And that's what will make these clouds really look real. Some areas that are, it's all in the edges. But it's back and forth to expect to put one paint stroke down and hope that it's going to not need to change is, um, you know, yeah, maybe a little high expectation on yourself. Glad you think so, Rocky. Thanks. Okay, have a sip of drink here. Okay, then I just look and I say, well, what area next? I could keep working on those clouds. Um, you know, but what area is kind of the furthest behind here? And I would say it's probably these trees. So let me get that mixture going up again. I'm going to use the, tr the uh, brush, that round I used for the, for the grasses. I'll clean it off pretty good here. And let's see, so I think toward the bottoms here, we're going to have, I'm remixing into this pile of green that I, I started with for the trees. Down at the base, that is really going to be the darkest, right? And um, I think, I'm really not so sure I like those sky holes, honestly. I'm still debating on that. Or I shouldn't say sky. It's really lake holes there. But, you know, I like the solidity of the base of that tree to kind of anchor this foreground here. And I'm losing some of that. So, for right now, I'm just going to paint over those. And model my, uh, you know, model my tree a little bit more here first, even if I like it. So this is a good lesson. It was a hard one for me to really learn. Was I, I might get an area that I've really thought, oh man, I got it. I like that. Hey, <laughs> how did I get that? I don't want to mess that up. But then you know, I I dance around that area of the painting so much that I can never really. Um, it holds me back from the rest, you know, to do what I need to in the other areas. So don't, you know, you might have a stroke of genius, really, <laughs> that you have happen every now and then. Um, but don't let that impede you from making the other areas of the painting work and trying different things. Now, I'm doing a little technique here of I'm warming up the area where that light's coming through. It happens with our eyes, you know, when you look at something really bright, you get this kind of burn effect where the light kind of burns into that edge. Um, it's a bit a gimmicky maybe here, I don't know. But I'm trying that just to see if that's something worth, worth doing. And, and the reason is, the reason is, I do have a logic, it's not just a gimmick, but this tree edge, as it, as it goes around to the sky is picking up more of that orange. So I'm taking this warm mixture, very similar tone, I mean, um, value, right? So it's not getting, I don't want to, I don't want to, all the different colors in this shape need to be really tight in the value range. They need to fit within the value, this dark value of this tree. But I can change them at will. And so I'm just, I'm using that to um, 
define the edge of this tree, make it interesting, throw in some different colors in here, and um, just see, it'll just make it a little more fun to look at. I can go a little bit lighter some areas, a little bit darker. Now I've got kind of this violet. Um, and I can put that on maybe the, maybe I have a strategy where I say, um, you know, that violet's going to be on the edges of the tree that are facing up, you know, and it warms as I, as I turn the form, thinking about form. Then this is, you know, this could be, um, you know, anything and it's beautiful to look at. Hey, hey, cat, you're coming to my workshop. I'm thrilled. It will be great to see you again, and you know how beautiful that area is, so I really look forward to it. We are going to have a great time. So my workshops, um, I do a lot of demonstrations, of course. I talk about the concepts, and I teach them as I go and uh, demonstrate what that's gonna, you know, what, what I mean. Um, but then there's a lot of time, you know, we'll be out in just amazing mountain scenes with Rocky Mountain waters and rivers, and um, it's spectacular. If you like that kind of stuff, you should really think about joining us. Um, but I also, depending on the hardiness of the group, I'll paint you know, I'll go out, I'll, I'll go back out and paint the sunset because I like to go, I, I use these workshops as an opportunity to, um, um, get reference material and small plein air pieces that I'll turn into studio paintings. So I'll oftentimes after teaching all day, I'll go back out and get the sunset, you know, and I'll just be in the zone cause I only have a little bit of time. So, um, I will, you know, anybody who wants to come out is welcome to. We can eat dinner together. We can go paint afterward. Uh, I really like that. It's not an expectation because that gets a little bit hard on folks. Um, and this is about having fun and learning. So I'm not going to push you to where you're <laughs> just exhausted. But for those of you who want to go and try different, different things, um, you know, like really push trying to get a sunset, um, there's opportunity for that too. My last workshop up there at Grand Lake, Colorado, it was just spectacular. I think I did, oh, at least four studio paintings from my reference material that I had, uh, you know, my plein air stuff that I picked up there. So lots of fun. Okay, I've just been, uh, hopefully you can see, yeah, you can see these edges. All these little colors in here just make this a fun area of the painting to look at. And then as I go to the opposite side of all of that color, I'm going to get into, you know, some of this cooler, deeper blue over here. And some areas that, you know... They're just not getting the light. So having some variety in there is just fine. Well, how's it looking, guys? It is looking like a little bit of a ball right here. So, um, you know, one thing I can do is, is mess up this edge here. You know, see how that just imparted a little bit of grassiness feel there. Um, I might come in actually with a little bit of uh, that sky hole again. Just see, maybe, <laughs> uh, maybe we'll just drop a little bit right there. See what we get. So that could work. That's all right. I think I could get live with that. Yeah, um, this kind of looks like an eye up here, so I'll get rid of it. And then maybe right on the edge here, put just a little bit of uh, opening there. 
Okay, so it's kind of coming together and feeling, feeling rounded and fun uh, to look at. It's the goal. And um, so the other thing I didn't quite like was this other bank of trees in the background here. And that was this color. So what don't I like about that color? Yeah, somehow it, it's just a weird color between the blue and the green. So I'm going to maybe go a little more blue on top of that, lighten it up. I'm just going to try some different things. That's not where I want to go. So I put it up there and just test it. And sometimes I like it, but I'll know right away, you know, and this other paint on here is set up enough. I'm not messing anything up. So I'm going lighter with it as well, but it's got to be darker than the mountain behind it. Quite a bit darker actually, isn't it? Maybe I want a little more red in there. And then toward the bottom it gets darker, I guess, is a shoreline. I suppose that makes sense. Next week, I'm going to the Oil Painters of America National Show in um, <laughs> Charlotte, South Carolina. Not Charlotte. Charlotte's North Carolina. Why am I missing that? Um, ah, Charleston, South Carolina. And, um, so I'm looking forward to that. I'm either going to pre-tape an episode of this. I mean, I've made a commitment to myself to do these every week, so I'm going to figure out a way to get it done unless I don't, but I'm excited for that show. I've got a piece of, uh, work in there and, um, I have not been there before, so I'm looking forward to going and I'm going to uh, do some plein air painting there. So I'm going to load up all my gear and take that. They have a competition for all of these uh, oil painters that come in. And they're all, of course, fabulous. <laughs> so it's kind of a neat thing to see everybody painting. So I'm going to put my... Uh, yeah, give my effort, see what I can do with it, with that landscape, even though that's kind of a new landscape for me. So what I'm doing here is just kind of building up the chroma and the brightness of the water. And just clearing up my shoreline a little bit there too. And this can be a mix of things here. Sometimes I'll go back and forth on the water until I get just the right amount of randomness and feel that I like here. This is coming along all right. And I'm going to bring some of that color even down into the grass there a little bit. All right, and then this other little group of shrubs over here, it's a little more, it's a little closer to us, so it's warming up. Doesn't have a lot of yellow though, so I'm going to go more on the red side. And see how I'm just going back in now. I've already painted these shapes. I probably don't need to do anything else, but by going in with another layer of paint, a little bit different color, and refining the edges, then um, there's a, some implied texture and detail in there. And the same thing on this one, it's going to get a little darker as it goes down to the, the ground. And sometimes that, you can just, with a few brush strokes, imply the, imply the, um, you know, the dark side of the tree that might not be getting any light. Like that. 
All right. What else would I do here? I might come in and um, use my my uh, little pencil point thing that I sharpened the back of a brush. I might put in, I might just see if, since the, the background is um, pre-toned, I can scrape through this a little bit and end up with a, um, you know, just that tone showing through. So, I don't know, I'm just kind of messing around here, see if this adds anything. But a few of these little scr scratch marks and such through here, um, I don't think that's really going to work for this painting. It's not what I need. But I can use it to um, kind of, you know, mess up an edge and that kind of thing too, and that works all right. Maybe even do it back here. Yeah, this edge seems really hard. So see, I'm just going to drag through the paint. It's not even a brush. And what I'm doing there is just, it's softening that edge. It's dragging that paint around a little bit. And that looks more appealing to me. Seems more natural to me now. can do these little I can even scoop up some paint on this I suppose let's see if that works put a couple dots in there we go that's kind of interesting I could do that up here we got all these different tools at our disposal just try them out okay so what I have here now I've got a lot of texture it's a believable scene I'll go back and look at my uh, my reference and, uh, you know, one thing I see in the references, there are a few little kind of shrubby things here in the foreground, <clears throat> um, like right here, that come up. And, um, and kind of stand up in front of that lake a little bit there. I got to be careful. I don't really want to have to repaint that whole area, but I might have to. I'm going to try it, though. All good. Add a few little darks in here. Now I'm just going into my piles I already have because if I put some darks in here that are colors that I have elsewhere, it all looks natural and nice. And this adds a kind of a violet here. Yeah, and that's nice. And this is where I start thinking about compositionally, how do I some of these little dots and dashes. It's a nice way to add some, just a lyrical note to the painting, I think. All right. So I will um, probably, what I'll do on this a little bit is after it sets up, I will go back in and I'll punch up some of the sky. I want that to set, set up a little bit. And what I mean by punching up some of the sky is um, you know, with this higher chroma mixture here, I can see some of the panel showing through. So I might, for example, see, I can't really even get it to happen right now because the paint is not sticking, but I can put some thicker, almost highlights in the sky of this, you know, pure orange yellow that'll really, um, you know, just be beautiful. You can kind of see it up here. Actually, you can't see that. It's a little bit out of the frame, I think. But I've got some areas in the upper sky that, you know, could just be clouds that are catching, catching a little bit of the light. See that? I really like that effect. Um, it just says there's something up there that's, you know, maybe it's just a little bit of a cloud in the sky that's picking up a little bit of that light but what that does is add so much luminosity to the painting um, but sometimes you got to do these things after everything is set up a little bit more the paint underneath so I'll probably do a little bit of that on this because I think this painting is um, you know has potential 
it's a nice it's going to be a nice scene to look at and i think you know likewise I'll, I'll have a little bit of that happening down along um the edge of the mountain because you can get some you know really nice effect right along the edge of the mountain since that sun is down behind there but it gets really hard to do i can do it while the paint's all wet but it becomes extra hard because you know i i dip into the i hit the purple a little bit i don't want to hit the purple and then so um it's just better sometimes to, to let it dry a little bit or maybe even totally um my problem is once i let them dry totally i don't really like to work on them i don't know so anyway, that, that's the kind of thing. I could even come back in with the palette knife, for example, with that bright color on there and lay some right there. See that? This is where you kind of get the punch to the painting. These are the little decorations that you have to be careful about. You don't want to do too much of them, but um, they really can make a difference in, in the painting overall. And they're a lot of fun. Right. Hey, thanks for joining me. I think um, I think that painting was a success. Uh, you know, th these sunsets are a little bit tough. Um, so just watch the chroma. Start with the colors that you know in the landscape and get those right and the values right. And then add just enough chroma to the sky, the things that are, you know, all lit up and, and really say that it's a sunset. You know, work into those colors so you're not getting, um, you know, straight out of the tube. In fact, if you're going straight out of the tube with an orange or a yellow to paint your sunset, that should be your red flag that something's not right. You're going to, um, you'll be far away from that pure tube pigment normally. Um, but, you know, you can keep adding to that. And if it dries and it doesn't have the punch you want, um, you know, you can go back in and, and, you know, go lighter or brighter, whatever you need to do. But it's more about those value relationships. And if I have, so that whole foreground in this painting is uh, darker and it's very neutral. And so that's the opposite of lighter and colorful, right? So that darker neutral foreground and trees is the, you know, it's kind of the, the foundation that sets up the rest of the color in the, the painting to look vibrant and great, even though it's very grayed down and, and relatively muted. So just keep that in mind and you'll have better success. And, um, you know, try a few of these. These are hard to do plein air. You, you know, the sun goes down too quick. You can and you'll get better, but try a few at home. I'll put my reference photo up. It's a great photo, actually. Sometimes that's hard to get a good photo of the, um, of the sunset. So I'll put that on YouTube in the community tab. Feel free to use my photos and do your own. I'd love to see some work. Um, I've seen a couple, so I know you guys are painting from that. Give this a try. Paint along with me. You know, you can rewatch this video and just go along and, and do it at the same time. Um, so I'll end there. Uh, Dana, thanks for joining. Everybody, thanks for joining. I won't go through the whole list, but we had a great crowd tonight. So thank you very much. Um, like I said, I'm traveling next week. But I'll try to put something up anyway and encourage you to watch. Maybe I'll even live broadcast from OPA show. That's kind of cool. I might do that. Um, check out my workshop. Uh, there's only 10 slots. So there's nine now because Kat just signed up. So uh, if you want to come out to Colorado, go ahead and, and, and do that. Sign up. You can pay there. It's 400 bucks for three days. If you have any questions, then message me. I'll get right back to you and we can talk about any questions that you have. Hey, thanks and good night. And I'm glad to see you all again this week. And uh, when this dries, I'll post an image of it. Take care. Thanks for joining me. Good night. Bye-bye.